he's not alive enough, he himself will fall asleep listening to himself. So, um, right, Paul? I turned the heat down so that I won't uh, fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, let me pray for you, Paul, and then uh, give us God's word. Lord God, thank you for um, your servant, Paul, and uh, Evelyn, and the ministry they've had over the years. Um, as he shares your word with us this morning, words that cross over centuries and nations and peoples and situations, may your word speak to us. Uh, the same word that causes mountain to trembles, mountains to tremble and waters to roar. May your word reach into our hearts and break through the hardness or the fears, or the um, whatever else may be in the way of receiving from you today. Come, Spirit of God, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, Mark. I want to talk about the committed Christian life. Taken from Philippians 3, 10 and 11. Everyone, then, you're, Paul, just sorry, I just want to interrupt one second. Can everyone hear okay? Paul, hear okay? Can everyone hear Paul okay? <laughs> yes, Norman can. Okay. Let me pull a little closer. Good. No, that's good, Paul. You're being heard fine from what I hear, so go ahead. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. There's uh, four sections to that, uh, that verse. Uh, I'd like to take a, a few moments in each one. The operative word here is no. The word in the original language means to be taking in knowledge, to come to know, to recognize, or to understand completely. Since the beginning of Jesus, or since the meeting of Jesus, rather, on the road to Damascus, Paul probably knew more about Jesus, with the exception, perhaps, of the disciples, who walked with Jesus for three years, than anyone. <laughs> and yet, he wanted to know more. To have a more complete understanding about who Jesus was, and how he, Paul, related to him. I have to ask myself if I have that same deep desire to know Jesus more. Do you desire to know Jesus more? I appreciated that song, the last song, um, I want to know him more. In 2 Corinthians 11, 24 to 28, Paul, Paul's accomplishments in the flesh, Paul counts as done that he might attain Christ and him alone. He says, from the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I've been in the deep. In journeys often, in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils of the Gentiles, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the, in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and toil, in sleeplessness often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness, besides the other things which come upon me daily, my deep concern for all the churches. Paul was a zealot. Um, he was a Pharisee of the Pharisees, and he was so committed to his idea of what God was, uh, that he was willing to, to go and to uh, gather up all the Christians uh, and bring them to Jerusalem uh, to, be, um, to be punished. Um, we'll talk about that. Philippians 3, 5 to 9, Paul's, we see Paul's zeal for Christ. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, concerning the law of Pharisee, 
concerning zeal, persecuting the church, concerning the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. Yet what things were gained to me, these I have counted lost for Christ. Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. And count them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the <clears throat> righteousness which is from God, by faith. So then we go to this. Oh, by the way, uh, before I go to the next uh, part of the verse, um, at the end, I would like you to um, to talk about what you have learned about God or what you've learned, learned about Jesus. Um, and we'll have some consensus there. Anyways, the second part of the verse is, and the power of his resurrection. The power that raised Jesus from the dead is the same power that raises us from the old sinful life to new life in Christ. Also the same power that keeps us from sin. Paul wanted to experience that power, the power of Jesus in his life. I was just thinking that uh, the, the power that it takes to uh, heal the sick and, and raise the dead, uh, Jesus has that power as well. Then we go on to the fellowship of his sufferings. And this is where I find it hard to, to fathom uh, Paul's depth of commitment. Um, but it's amazing what he says. Paul had been told by Jesus how much he would suffer for him. And Paul eagerly embraces it. There's just a brief reference to in Acts 9, uh, 16, uh, where the Lord tells Paul how much he's going to suffer for him. In verse 4, um, or part number 4, be conformed to his death. Paul did not fear death, but he identified with Christ in his death. Paul was concerned that his life was taken, or sorry, he was concerned that if his life was taken, what would happen to his children in the Lord? As far as him not fearing death, he said in Philippians 1.21, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. In 2 Corinthians 5, 6 to 8, it says, so we are always confident knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, yes, well pleased, rather to be absent from the body and to be present from, with the Lord. The Philippians 1, 23 and 24, for I, I am hard pressed between the two, having a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better, Nevertheless, to remain in the flesh is more needful for you. And then I was looking through uh, some passages and I came across this one. Galatians 2.20 For I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. <laughs> That kind of commitment um, changed the world. Um, Paul not only had that uh, sense of commitment, but uh, the disciples and the people that were one to Christ had that same zeal for the Lord. And the, and the gospel spread through the whole world. It's amazing uh, what happened there. Um, and then the end of, of that passage is 
not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to uh, have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God <laughs> in Christ Jesus. <laughs> we, are, we are facing a very uncertain times, not only with the, the COVID-19 virus, um, but in events that, um, that will happen probably this year. Um, and our resolve will be tested. Um, but we need to stand firm for the Lord. Okay, I'd like to hear from, from others um, what you learned um, about Christ in, in your walk with him and in uh, your reading of the Bible and, and so forth. Um, could you just uh, share some of those ideas? I don't hear anybody. <laughs> Mark is, or yeah, I. Paul, for me, I think uh, having been raised in the church, similar to Paul being raised as a devout Jew, um, there's a lot of assumptions that Paul made, or con not assumptions, convictions that Paul held that had to be uh, radically adjusted as he followed Christ. And of course, it required a, a, a radical meeting of Christ on the road to Damascus. But along the way, there was also uh, opportunities for that transformation to take place. So for myself, uh, knowing Christ has been uh, radically shifted at various points in my life, especially when it comes to reading the Gospels. But then, then going from the Gospels back to the epistles and to the rest of Scripture and realizing um, just how, how deep and, and significant the call to follow Christ is, but also um, how he's willing to, to live and walk with the messiness of people much more than I am. And, and so learning to... to see the gospel in the midst of that mess um, and both in my own life and in the lives of other people. And then to uh, again, come back to the cross and say, you know, I have to put my trust in, in what Christ did on the cross. Um, so uh, for me, it's in fact, one of my great concerns is I've, that I every so often I feel like I've maybe arrived and, and I haven't, I, I continue to, as Paul said, I need to continue to press on to allow Christ to reshape areas of my life that um, are easily, that are easily religious, religiousized or neglected or um, made to look like they're righteous when maybe they're not uh, because of underlying events or attitudes or whatever it may be. So that's my two bits. 